To prepare for interviews, you really need to understand what you're going to be asked. Um, you can go to your careers service for a list of potential questions or common questions that interviewers might pose to you. After that, I would advise that you prepare some answers or think about your six top stories um, or really positive things that you've achieved that you want an employer to know about you. From that, you can then go away and practice with family or friends or your career service to make sure that when those questions come, you're prepared for them and you can answer them very succinctly and very confidently. Uh, preparing for interviews, I think, is one of the most important uh, things to do. Um, so making sure that you are researching about the company, that you know, uh, you don't have to know the ins and outs of what the company do, but um, look at their career site, um, look at some of uh, their social media posts. Um, you could even research the person if you know who's going to be interviewing you. Um, that preparation is, is really key. Look at the company website. Look up whoever's interviewing you, read news articles about either the company or the department or the industry that you're going to be working in. Make sure that you have something valuable to understand and bring to the table when you go in. Also, practice. If you can practice for an interview, even though it feels silly at a kitchen table across from your parents, you will feel a lot calmer when some of those questions do pop up in a room and you feel under pressure. Um, how you should prepare specifically for zero. Uh, I would personally recommend making sure that you understand what our values are. We have five of them. I'll let you go look those up yourself. But if you can sit there and have a real think about what your values are personally and then align those to our values, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable when you walk in the room because it does matter to us that whoever comes on board really understands who we are and wants to be a part of that. Your interview is probably the most important presentation that you'll have to make. Um, so you need to be prepared. And that comes with researching the company, uh, researching the industry, but most importantly, really knowing yourself, uh, knowing your CV, knowing your work experience inside and out, as well as your strengths and any areas where you feel you maybe need to develop or improve. Um, and again, preparing to answer um, questions um, and also preparing to ask questions to the interviewer. Behavioural questions really do what it says on the tin. We're looking to assess your behaviour, so how you have um, acted in the past and how you will probably continue to act in the future. Something that students often forget to include at this stage is an example. So if somebody says to you, tell me how you act in a team, we don't just want some descriptive words. So I like collaborating and I like being the leader. We're looking for a story. So again, the what, the how or the why, or perhaps you can use a star format that you might have heard uh, of before. So the situation, the task, the action and the result. Don't forget that this is your one big chance to shine and to sell yourself, so you should always include as much detail as possible to really bring your behaviour to life and make us want to want you in our organisation. I think my favourite question with the interview is probably the one that students dread the most and that's tell me about yourself at the beginning because it's really vague and you can do what you want with it and that's exactly why I like it. You have complete creative control to take that in whatever direction you want so it gives you the chance to tell them your best story straight away to make them really impressed with you from the first minute that you're talking. After all, science and research tells us that people make a decision about whether or not they like you or whether or not they want to hire you very, very quickly at the start of the interview. So in the tell me about yourself question, I would be looking for something similar to your motivational statement or personal statement on your CV. So a snapshot of who you are, your work experiences, your extracurricular experiences, your education, so what's your degree background, and then what you're looking for out of your career and how EY and this role that you've applied for can fulfill that. My favourite questions um, are initially the, the opening questions are always really valuable for me and um, the questions where it's you know talk through talk me through your CV and um, because somebody who is talking about themselves um, and their career history 
you know, they're, they're telling a story, it's interesting, you learn about this person, you learn about where they've been, what they've been doing, um, yeah, things like that. So I guess the opening, the initial getting to know someone in an interview. So personally for me, um, I interview based on soft skills, so I've got a couple of favourite questions. Um, my absolute favourite question is to ask, what did you do to prepare for this interview? When someone answers that question about what they did to prepare for the interview, they're telling me how much they want the job. They're telling me the extra effort that they went to to make sure that they would be somewhat successful. And it also gives them an opportunity to tell me what kind of person they are. Are they proactive? Do they go out and seek information? Or do they get it from other sources? I'm always interested to see who's really passionate. I have gone and I've asked some technical leads um, what their favourite technical question is. Um, and I've got two. Your favourite tool? And then another one was, what technology do you use to have fun? So they've both kind of defined that in the way that they want to know whether you've got a genuine passion for coding or technology when it comes to development, um, whether it's something you do at home in your own time, and also if there's something that you've gone and investigated outside of your studies. So that's always cool to look at. So I, my, one of my favourite questions is to ask candidates when something's gone horribly wrong. And it's quite interesting, to every, that, that term horribly wrong is quite subjective. But I want to know, the reason I ask that question is, when something did go wrong, how did you cope with it? How did you manage? How did you come uh, face that and, and what was your result? So show us how resilient you are is kind of where I'm going with that question. But it's one, it always, it stumps some people, um, but one I like to ask. So the question I most like asking students is um, asking them to talk through a, a team project that they are currently working on or have either worked on and what challenges uh, have they faced um, throughout that project and then diving a little bit deeper into that so asking them about um, how they would do things differently if they had the chance to. My favourite questions to ask in an interview are um, firstly tell me about yourself because it gives us a chance to build rapport and break the ice. Um, it also tells us more than you think it does so if um, you, know, you tell us that you have been part of a sports team for a long period of time, you've actually gone into coaching, um, we can see that you're committed, um, you're dedicated, you've got a passion for something and that is really um, indicative of the sort of person that you are and it will help us see if your values and your goals align with us as a company. Second favourite question would be what do you know about Main Freight because it really weeds out the people who've done the research and those who haven't. So if you can tell us um, you know we're a global company, what our different divisions are, different services, um, that's great and it does show that you've done the research but uh, we have had one candidate who kind of blew me out of the water really when I asked her what do you know about main freight and she said I know that every year you hold a main freight idol so like American Idol um, we all get together or any, anyone who wants to, to can come together and um, be part of this main freight idol competition and she said that one day she would love to be part of the competition um, and then when I asked her what she'd sing she said she'd actually rap Nicki Minaj so immediately I you know really warmed to this uh, this girl that it was yeah, amazing that she had managed to dive so far into her research that she found something that is very much just an internal event. The third question that I like to ask is why main freight? Because that helps us understand where your values and your goals and your career direction are going and whether they align with um, main freight's um, goals and, and direction as well. If you get a tricky question, don't panic. So if you get offered a drink at the interview, the beginning of the interview, always ask for one, always take the water. Because when you get the tricky question, you take a sip of water and you have time to think about it. If you've had your drink of water and you still can't think of an answer, then don't be afraid to say to the interviewer, hey, I've had a little bit of a mind blank, do you mind if we come back to that one? Most interviews won't have a problem with that. So don't panic is, is the key piece of advice in that regard. 
There will always probably be a few tricky questions coming up in interviews, so it's really important to take a deep breath. You can pause for a moment, um, make sure you're telling your interviewer that you are doing that, um, and ask them to repeat the question. If you don't understand something, it's really important to uh, get that question across or, or get that answer across um, in the right way. So every interviewer likes to ask tricky questions. Uh, so before you answer, it's good to stop, have a think about what they've actually asked you, make sure that you understand the question and it's completely fine to ask them to, to rephrase it or, or say the question again. The last thing you want is to start talking before you've properly understood it. Asking questions at the end of the interview is often something that's overlooked by people who are new to the process and it can be a really important part of the decision making process for the interviewer because it shows us how hungry you are for the role and your level of engagement is really important in us deciding if we want to offer you a role. So I would use that opportunity to ask the interviewer about the company and their career journey, ask them about the business area you're applying to and about the role that you're going to be going into, ask them about future opportunities. There's no such thing as a stupid question uh, as long as you've done your, your research first of all and you've answered all the easy questions about EY. For instance, don't go in there asking them um, you know, what parts of the business there are because you can look at that on the internet and we want to see that you have done some research before you come into the interview. So yeah, um, good solid questions that you can't get the information off the internet are always a winner in my opinion. Ask the interviewer insightful questions. Three things that interviewers judge a candidate on are a candidate's first impression, the quality of your answers, but also the quality of your questions. So the best questions focus on um, what impact does my role have on the business and maybe what challenges would I face in my role. Uh, another good question to ask an interviewer is what are the major performance expectations of me in this position and then maybe talk to some uh, past experiences um, that relate to, to the job. It can really vary depending on how the interview goes, but if you've done your research and you've come across something that you're not 100% sure on, this is a great opportunity to ask us for some clarification, whether it be on our program, um, on our business goals. Um, and again, it shows us that you've done that research, but you just, you know, you want a little bit more clarification. Um, it's also quite good to ask the interviewer their experience with the company. If you do that, you can see how they um, have progressed. You can also see um, why they enjoy being part of the company. So you can kind of get an idea of whether it is somewhere that you want to be. So it kind of you know, works both ways. The interviewer would like to hear questions that show you've done some research, but also your interests. So coming to Deloitte, um, wanting to know what the team looks like, the structure, social occasions, what we do outside of our everyday, but showing a lot of interest in what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, not just about it being working for Deloitte, um, not being blinded by that brand. So wanting to know what the day-to-day -day looks like and, and being really keen to understand um, how the team operates and, and what they do. So in terms of asking the interviewer questions, um, I am a firm believer that interviews are a two-way street. Um, so you are, although you are being interviewed by KPMG, for example, this is your chance to ask questions of us. Um, it's your chance to find out about the social life. It's your chance to find out about the culture. Um, ask the questions that you want to know about. Um, don't ask questions that you think we want to hear because we want to get genuine answers and responses from you as well. At the end of an interview, the interviewer will always ask you if you have any questions. This is a great chance to ask about career progression. Um, ahead of the interview, you may even be provided with the interviewer's name. So it's a great chance to look them up on LinkedIn, find out what their role is in the company and even ask them if they have any guidance for you for your future career. So the best way to build rapport in an interview is to ask questions, to be yourself, try to be relaxed. If you've prepared well for the interview, you'll be confident. Um, you can ask the interviewer about their role in the business. Um, and obviously when you get someone talking about themselves, it starts to build rapport, you're asking questions. Uh, 
Uh, so to wear to an interview it's important to be professional. Um, again if you're not sure just ask that question of the HR person or whoever you've been dealing with. At Fish and Paco Healthcare we don't wear ties or we don't wear suits so um, we make sure that we let our interviewees know or our candidates know um, and be comfortable with what you're wearing. I think it's really important also to make sure you iron your clothes. Um, that's a, a big yes. <laughs> So it's really important to remember to dress professionally for an interview. Dress for the employer. Um, obviously if you're applying for a graphic design role, the, the dress attire might be slightly different to a professional services company. So do your research, um, but it's always important to be very professional and neat. So in terms of what to wear for an interview, um, gentlemen should wear um, suits and, suit and tie and women should be the same, so um, formal business attire at all times. I would say an interview, it's common for men to wear ties, but on a daily basis in EY, if people are just in the office, then ties aren't that usual unless you're going out to client site. I think um, with weddings as well, it's better to overdress than underdress. Um, so yeah, I would, I would just play it safe and wear a tie. Yeah, yes, I do think a suit and tie is appropriate. Um, we're looking at you when you come in for interview, it is that first impression, but with Deloitte it's can we put you in front of our clients, so how did you choose to present yourself to us, and it's really important, so yes I do think a suit and tie, you can never go wrong with a suit and tie, so yes I do think so. My top three tips I suppose for interviewing are to be relaxed, be yourself, it's super difficult to achieve that, but if you practice, I promise it does get easier and easier. Um, a way to overcome those nerves, and my second tip, would be to really know yourself. So you are a product, you, you have a brand that you're trying to sell to the employer, to EY. So you need to know exactly what you have to offer and what you're looking for. So with the interviewer, you can determine if there's a match there between the supply and demand that you're discussing. So know what you have to offer and then know what the things are that are attracting you to EY and then you can talk about why you'd be a good fit and why you would be um, good for the business and a great long-term employee. Thirdly, I would encourage you to work on your rapport or networking building, um, sorry, your networking skills, relationship building skills. This is often something that students can struggle with because they've not had much experience of this. So come to speed networking sessions, come to employer-led workshops and just be comfortable with being outside of your comfort zone and talking to strangers. As I have mentioned before, you will be working with the people who are interviewing and assessing you at the assessment centre and in the interview. So they just want to see if you're going to be able to do the job well, but are we going to have fun working together? Are we going to get the best out of our team dynamic? And rapport is a really big part of that. Um, other things that I think students need to know about an interview is um, you know, it is a chance for you to learn as well. It is a learning experience. It's a chance for you to come in and be in a bit, you know, be in a formal and um, professional environment and see what that is like. Um, I would also suggest that you um, definitely do some research beforehand and um, research the building. Things like if you're going to drive, where are you going to park? Um, arrive early, but don't arrive too early that it's going to really infuriate the recruiters. Um, you know, if you have an interview at three o'clock, you know, five to three is a perfect time to turn up at reception. Just little things like that. Three other recommendations when it comes to interview. Don't be too early and don't be too late. Too early, for, it looks like you can't manage your time and too late, well that's obvious. So um, be there about 10 minutes before your interview's due, that's fair, unless you've been asked to come in earlier to do paperwork and things like that. If you find yourself outside the office half an hour beforehand, go find a coffee shop, go for a walk, go do something, but don't show up too early because it, it's really awkward for the receptionist while you sit there for half an hour waiting for your interview. Everybody feels a little bit awkward, so don't come in too early is probably one of my key things for you. A key thing you should do before going in for an interview is making sure your phone is turned off. Not on silent, turned off. It's really distracting, um, not just for the interview, but for you as well. So you might be mid-flow and that goes off. Um, many a time I've been in interviews where the phone is actually rung. Um, and what that says by you leaving it on is that maybe when not as important to you as what's coming through on that phone. So turn it off if you're, if you're serious about coming to work for us. 
Just make sure you uh, take a deep breath before you go in. Um, no matter how many times you have gone for an interview, there is always an element of nervous. Um, so you can ask for, for water if, you, if that's going to make you feel more comfortable. Make sure you go to the bathroom or go to the toilet before so that you are fully um, comfortable within that interview time. Presentation is everything. Um, I've had a candidate um, kind of rock up and the first thing I noticed when he sat down was that he was chewing gum and immediately my mind is taken off what he's saying because all I can see is that the white piece of gum rolling around in the mouth um, and we won't be afraid to tell you to spit it out because it is actually you know it's unprofessional um, and it's distracting. Um, another thing is um, it is key that you've done your research because it shows us that you're motivated um, and that you actually want to be here interviewing with us. And lastly, it's really important just to be yourself because when you come in to your role, that's who you're going to be. So we want to see your personality, we want to see the real you. So it's really important in an interview to be yourself. Try to build rapport with the interviewer if you can. Um, ask questions, do your research, and if possible, try to pick uh, employers that align with your career goals as well and your career objectives, because your enthusiasm and passion is going to come through in the interview. Three other tips for uh, nailing your interview would be, one, firm handshake. It needs to be firm. It's always such a good impression if you can hold someone's hand without dominating them, but make sure it's there, you've got some substance. Two. Arrive early, not too early, but 10 to 15 minutes is always good and it gives you an opportunity to breathe while you're sitting outside. If you arrive on the dot flustered, you're going to be off your balance the moment you walk in and it's going to be pretty nervous. So if you can arrive early, you'll definitely do well. And number three, I would say act interested. If you're interested, be interested. If you're engaged, be engaged. If you're leaning back in your seat with your body language, you're not interested. Don't look out the window when you're talking to someone. Eye contact is really important. The difference between someone talking to you while they look out the window and the difference to somebody leaning forward and using hands, gestures, making eye contact and really trying to get their point across is the difference between a good answer and a bad answer. You could have the best answers in the world, but if you're answering in a way that gives off the wrong impression, you're not going to do well.